So to start off, let's start with the Pittsburgh game. Um, they go to Philly, get absolutely waxed, which, by the way, I predicted the score almost exactly. I think I said that, that Pittsburgh scores anywhere between, what, 10 to 13 or something like that? You, you said anywhere from 10 to 13 points for Pittsburgh, and you 13. said uh, you said 33 to 36 for uh, for Philly, and they ended up scoring 35. So so I almost basically you know, perfectly predicted it. Um, look, here, here's, a little mini here's the thing. So, so Pittsburgh went out and got the corner... Um, I, I William Jackson. From, I think they yeah, got him on, from, from on, on Tuesday, I believe, Monday or Tuesday. Um, so that should help a little bit. But the secondary is not very good. Like, we're not very good at all. And uh, when you're facing A.J. Brown, that's going to be a problem. But let's not act like Jalen Hurts is this wonderful thrower of the football. He gets the ball where he needs to go. But he's not like this pinpoint passer. But for some reason, he was against our corners. Now, like, I don't know if that's a corner issue, if they just had a good game. It, <clears throat> I mean, look when it's a when it's a quarterback like Jalen Hurts that carves you up, that screams defensive issues. That doesn't scream Jalen Hurts is you know a top ten passer in the league. I don't think he is top he, ten productive quarterback. Maybe he not is. pure passer. Yeah, though, but I see that. in terms of quarterback, for sure he's top ten at this point. I mean, he's been able to get it done with the legs. He's been able to throw I mean, good enough. He's yeah, good enough at throwing the football. He's been consistently accurate. Uh, and not making huge mistakes. Uh, this week, though, it just looked like the Steelers didn't know how to play defense. It, it, our corners got burnt on, I would say, like 70% of every single pass. It wasn't very good. So, But here I will say, once you get T.J. Watt back, the time that they have to cover shrinks dramatically. So that that's a bonus, and he should be back within a week or so. So I don't think long-term the defense is going to be the problem. I think they eventually find, kind of figure it out. He's um, valuable, too, T.J. Oh, my God, he's so valuable. But... Uh, I think the offense, which this is not a hot take, that's clearly the problem. Um, and here's what's concerning. It's when the key players aren't making the easy plays, right? I'm seeing a bunch of footage. There's a picture of Najee Harris catching the ball in the flat, looking upfield, with nobody within six yards of him. And the first down is three and a half to four yards away. He The, the play resulted in zero yards. He in the, there's like a, It's a picture. It's a snapshot. I'll try to find it, you know, to throw up on the screen. It's it's a picture. He catches it a yard behind the line of scrimmage. The first down is four yards away, we'll call it. There's nobody within a couple, probably I'd say about five yards of him. And the play resulted in zero net yards. Oh, man. Like, it's little, little things like that. We got to get north-south, people. Look. We got to start having an identity, a purpose to everything. There's no purpose. There's no identity. There's no... Anything. There's, there's no, no nothing. Drive. There's, there's no. There's no. There's no juice. There's nothing. It's a. It's a very just vanilla team. It feels like there's not any. There's no sort of pop. There's not going to be any big play potential. It seems like, uh, you know, it's, it's just they need to rebuild. They need to get pieces out of town and just which acquire as much draft capital as possible and maybe think about moving off of Kenny. We'll talk about it probably a later episode coming up i, I would I'll assume that topic time. would come up in like two to well, three weeks right we'll give them I'm, i've been giving them some more time but yeah. we'll get to it yeah for sure um they did go uh, claypool for a second round pick i like that um go check tiktok for the actual you know reaction i guess to it yep uh, all right second game here minnesota arizona so we kind of a little bit talked about how arizona we tend to be a little bit more productive um but i'm impressed with minnesota right so you have these three really nice playmakers thielen jefferson cook and you still have a backup running back who's scoring touchdowns, Alexander Madison. And you go out and get TJ Hawkinson. This is a big coaching tip of the hat to Kevin O'Connell. Yes. I mean, I, I really think the, the whole franchise has pivoted to understand the sensibility of the, the direction of the game. They don't. They might not love their quarterback, but they're certainly supporting him. Yep. They're giving him every opportunity to succeed. And Kirk Cousins, 90% of the time, is going to keep you in the game enough to win the game. Might need some help, but he's going to keep you in there and, and give you a chance to win. Right. And you said you liked Kevin O'Connell off a of bye, too. 100%. 100%. Because he's a good coach. So far, we think he's a good coach. Yep. Good coach is off a of bye. Um, so I, I think the, the whole game came down to, I think Cliff Kingsbury got outcoached by a rookie head coach. It looked that way, and I mean those signings, like you said, tip of the cap to them because and they get TJ Hawkins. You go yeah, out and you get TJ Hawkins, Darius Smith. Yeah, uh, the Hawkinson one is huge because now you have gonna... a big reliable target for Kirk. Uh, that's going to be able to help him out 
even more when he needs bailed out. Uh, so I really like the direction, and that's a team that has an identity, a team that has a purpose and, and a set direction that they want to move in. Absolutely, they do. So Absolutely, that, they do. It's no surprise that they're starting to find their success now. Would it shock you if they took a quarterback in the late part of the first round this coming draft? Because we know it's a deep quarterback class, so you might be able to find somebody that's serviceable, say – Say they're picking at, I think they'll be picking, you know, closer to like 25, 26. Look, I think if Kevin O'Connell can get the guy that he likes, if he likes somebody, this is going to be his first chance to kind of take a rookie quarterback and build him uh, in a system that he right. wants to kind of, you know, grow up. Uh, and it wouldn't be bad to have him sit behind and learn from a Kirk Behind Cousins. a Kirk, yeah. Uh, somebody who's very safe, somebody who probably has a ton of football IQ and football knowledge that they can at least help out a little bit. And Kirk seems like the type of guy that wouldn't, you know, I don't shy think, away from helping out a little I don't bit. think he's a big Ben where he's going to be like, oh, Mason Rudolph, blah, 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 you know? Yeah. Um, so, I, I mean, I, it wouldn't shock me, no. Uh, Bills Packers. So, first half, it was, it was a tale of two halves. First half, the Bills looked super dominant like we expected. Second half, they scored three points. So, here's – this has been the concern. It, this isn't a whole lot about the Packers. I don't care about the Packers. They're not good and they're not interesting. They're going to run the football between the tackles because that's about all they're good at. Off script, they're not very good at all. I can't trust the receivers, so I don't care about the Packers. They're not good. They're not relevant. I don't care. The Bills, though, are. They're a Super Bowl contender, and there's a glaring issue. They can't put games away. They don't have the running game to sustain against a good team that's going to be able to at least limit Josh Allen on the outside. They really struggle in the second half. Um, And when you're trying to, like, just... You know, run the clock out and just kind of get out of a get out of a game. Run the ball, run the ball, get first yeah. downs. Can't do it. Can't and, move it. And here's the thing: if they were wildly efficient on their short passing game, it would be okay. But they're not. They're more of a home run team, yeah. intermediate to deep routes. Every now and then they can break off, you know, or they can hit those those short little routes. But it doesn't they're, happen. All they're that nowhere often. near like like Pittsburgh and Ben's last year, where everything was in two yards of line of scrimmage, and that might have been a good team. But they were really good at that. Like, that was an extension of the run game. They were able to get the ball quick with an 85% completion rate, almost run the clock, you know. Um, So they go out and get Naeem Hines. But here's the issue. Naeem Hines is a pass catching back. Like, I don't think he fits the need that they have of, hey, we need to run the football better. Like, just point blank, full back, two tights, run the ball better. He's not that type of back. No. But then again, that's not their offense. But I don't think Hines is a pure runner that they think he is. Um, so I don't think it makes much of a difference. I think he's going to make more of an impact in the passing game than anything. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, at least open up some more options and kind of spread the field. Uh, yeah. Maybe force them into some more dime looks. Or I guess, yeah, dime looks. Yeah. Just get an extra DB on the field, kind of spread some things out, open up the whole – even some RPOs and uh, – And because you could put him in Even a play action. Because if you can use him in, uh, in a play action, get those linebackers to bite and open up something, even just – that like kind even of, a hair that kind of yeah. like 14 to 17 ish yard range uh-huh. right there over the linebackers right below the safeties yeah uh, so I, I think that's where he fits all right browns and Bengals that monday night football game um so look it's a standalone game people are going to freak out I, i'm not going to freak out this is a bad matchup the browns have a good pass rush the Bengals have a bad offensive line it's improving this week was bad but it's overall been improving they just lost jamar chase so give them a second give them a second i think they'll end up being fine um, no, I don't think Jacoby Brissett is better than Joe Burrow in any stretch, even though he played like it. It is what it is. That's one of those standalone games. It's on the road. It's a divisional opponent. It's no. Halloween. The fans are out in full force. It, no, that's look, just one of those tough spots, I think. Does this kind of raise any red flags to, okay, this is what Joe Burrow is without a Jamar Chase? Because now we have that sample size of Joe Burrow's first season where he was eh, middle yeah. of the road. He kind of did yeah. some all right things. And then once Jamar got there the, the next year, it was just night and day. Uh, and now we see him go out for a week and they immediately slip up. Is that something to at least consider that maybe Joe Burrow de- is you know a little dependent on a Jamar Chase? Perhaps. It's relatively valid, but um, actually that's a perfect segue because they are somewhere down here towards 9, 10 area in our top 10. So let's go ahead.